some people just don't want to see shows about that have a religious theme to me everybody should be a little open-minded you know for new things and not so locked into the religious part you know our journey is more spiritual than religious so Mm -hmm. i don't understand i truly don't understand why somebody wouldn't be open to seeing a different view um somebody else's view but i do have a couple of questions for you i wrote them down so okay okay. (laughs) ready got your coffee (laughs) <laughs> Should I have a cocktail? <laughs> well, I've got a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is afternoon there. Wow, that's true. Um, what inspired this? Is it, you call it a play, a series? Um, how do you refer to it? This is a play. It's written as oh. a play. So mm-hmm. what inspired that 10 years ago? Before I had, it was like a university. It was like a heaven, like in, in a university in heaven where God was giving all these angels tasks to create different things. And Ethan was a student who was given the task of creating Adam. Um, and then same sort of things happened. So... So I decided to scrap that idea um, and really hone in on just God and the angel and having a, like a power struggle type of thing. So I, I kind of started with that relationship mm-hmm. um, because that's what Ethan and God have is they have this power, this control thing. And then I read Genesis, which was, that was Very my next short. question, actually. That was, huh? my ne- that was my next question. Yeah, I read Genesis. It's very short. And then I did a lot of research on, you know, how things were interpreted since Genesis. And I started looking for some, you know, answers of, or I was like reflecting on, questions like for example like why was adam created as a man and not a a baby or a newborn like why was he created as a man right away and then i started plugging in thinking about if i was adam coming to form what would that be like you know do you have a past do you just are you told programmed and then accept it. And I think that just, you know, as a human, we wouldn't just be told, you know, what our destiny is going to be like and how to, how to conduct ourselves without some kind of question. So that brought in the idea of wires and, you know, given those, and that information. So when he does come to form in my uh, play, he has a past that he believes happened. Okay, so did you, when you, you said you read Genesis. Did you take anything from what you were taught in your religious background and incorporate any of that into it? Like what you learned growing up? When you're growing up, you're getting a lot of information from a lot of different sources. You're getting it from TV. You're getting it from your parents. You're getting it from service or church or what you read or a newspaper or images in advertisements. You know, you're, you're getting all this information, but it's not like through a lesson per se. So you as a child will be internalizing all this information and interpreting it naturally. And for my childhood, uh, what little I remember, <laughs> you know, I told my uh, cast, I was a CNE Christian, basically Christmas and Easter, we would go to service Christmas and Easter. 
They call them C and E Christians. I did yep. not know that. Never heard that. No. Nope. I think it's a slang I I've heard somewhere. Oh, it's, you're an you're a C and E Christian. Christmas and Easter. You know, and I didn't go to Bible school, and not that I remember, did I? You went to catechism. And what is that exactly? I remember That's like the- puppets. They did puppets. <laughs> <laughs> that was like um, teachings, you know, according to the Catholic faith. I think you went for one hour. I don't know what you were taught. Something I was probably about- bored out of my mind and just playing with the puppets the whole time. I think it was about communion and, and you know, cate- um, um, I can't even think of what it is now. But, you know, those kind of things, but preparing you for communion um, and things like that, just... I'm sure it was very basic, not in, too in depth for younger people. You know, you probably bored. Probably, probably didn't pay attention. <laughs> okay, what gave you the vision of what the characters would look like? I always thought uh, when I wrote it that the God was going to be a female. And so that was already in place. And I do leave it up to where every character can be any ethnicity. Oh. So, and I would adjust the script accordingly, you know. And so, and going back to more of the inspiration of the, of the piece is my own experience with relationships and how love differed across many different relation, you know, relationships that I had, mm-hmm. where I had like a physical love, or I had an emotional love, but not a physical love, or I had a sexual love, but not an emotional love, you know, things like that. So there's yeah. different languages of love. And I think that's what I wanted for these four characters is them all having a different language of love or what love means to them. I also saw in some research about free will. Free will was something that God gave angels is um, free will. So, and free will tied in with Ethan's language of love of choosing who you love or not choosing. So you... Did you read that somewhere that God gave the angels free will? I think I did. (laughs) Uh, Does that resonate with you at all? No. No. (laughs) There are certain angels that God used, like Gabriel was the messenger. Um, Then Raphael was another one. That yes, so there's three top ones, and then there's a hierarchy of archangels, angels, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they have different names. Leads me into my next question is why did God pass off the making of Adam to Seth? To Ethan? I'm sorry, to Ethan. Okay, Seth. Seth? Ethan. Who's Seth? That's another, um, that's um, one of Adam and Eve's sons. There was Cain and Abel and then Seth. Okay, so God has this plan of of creation, these days of creation that she set aside. And every day is just like critical to her. And by day four, she's losing her powers or she's feeling weak and she's afraid of making a mistake and her entrusted angel Ethan has always been by her side whenever she's needed him the most so she brings him in gives him the manual gives him instructions and and trusts that he will create Adam so that she can re- can rest and not make a mistake. Okay. So so that created the opportunity for Ethan to step in 
and exercise his free will. Okay. I just looked it up. So yeah, so angels did have free will, but they could not sin. They could not sin. Okay. They could not sin as long okay. as they didn't sin. Okay. Thank you for, I did not know that. Yeah. It says, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, this is all on the internet. So when I re did research, of course, I looked on the internet for things, but this one sure. says, um, the angels are spiritual beings who have personalities that include emotions, intelligence, and will. Okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Your vision of Adam and Eve, I think, was perfect. I mean, the way they looked. Uh, I didn't picture them to look that, you know, glamorous. But um, <laughs> I liked, you know, their fighting and their, you know, how they interacted. Uh, that was funny. You know, some of the things they said to each other. Uh, and I liked the way it kind of ended up being that um, you can love. Love is universal. I mean, you can love anybody, just like you said earlier. I mean, there's different kinds of love. But to me, when you love somebody, it's hard to explain it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that to be true? Sure. Like if you say, I love somebody, they'll say, well, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. It's more of a feeling than it is words. Right. So. Right. And each character communicates their perspective on love and what they need to both love and be loved. Mm -hmm. Even God That's mentioned true. it several I mean, times. I mean, I loved how you put that in there because that's so true to what God is about. He wants, he or she wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. So by all the people, it doesn't always work out that way. But I like the way you played that in there, because to me, that's important that we still realize that this is what it's all about. And I think God wants us all to have love. And I, and I like, too, that it doesn't matter who you are. Um, I'm going to cry. Um, we all want that. It doesn't matter. So I thought it was very beautiful. That's why I was getting emotional during some of the scenes because it's it's so true, you know. Some people never find it, but they keep looking. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what that's what I want ultimately of this whole piece is to for, to start conversations about you know life and the some of the issues. Uh, within this piece that can spark up those conversations because uh, there's a lot there's a lot in here there's a lot in there mm -hmm.